Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. Live from Austin, Texas, broadcasting worldwide, it's Alex Jones. Bob Chapman of the internationalforecaster.com, always an invaluable analyst, joins us then. Jerome Corsi is going to be popping in to give us his take on Andrew Breitbart and on Sheriff Arpaio saying the birth certificate is a forgery. That's professional forensics department. He's got a big sheriff's department there in Phoenix. And they, they came out and went over the same evidence we showed you back when this broke last year. Uh, but, but I want to get into the economy right now and then get Bob Chapman, who was in intelligence. Who's, they've tried to kill him before on Breitbart, who said he was going to release the video of Obama in communist meetings and, quote, destroy him. He was going to release it yesterday. He died that night. Well, after going to a restaurant and having two glasses of wine. Very suspicious. But, Bob, what do you make of Bernanke saying everything's wonderful, we're not going to have QE3, now admitting this week in a speech, the Associated Press ran with it, that, hey, we're at the edge of a financial cliff. Yeah, who took us to that cliff? Bob Chapman. Well, it certainly wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> that said, uh, the... Um I, I think the sterling part of the interviews with Congress this week was Ron Paul holding up the uh, uh, Silver Eagle, you know, like, this is real money and you're a liar. And, you know, th that's a real precedent. And, you know, they, they, what, what happens to liars is that, and I found this out when I was a little kid, uh, you keep on telling lies and you got to count 10 new ones to cover the one old one. And after a while, it grows like topsy, and you can't handle it. And this is a position that Bernanke and many others are in government today because now there are people uh, saying things like Ron Paul did. Uh, in reference to Mr. Breitbart, um, very simply, that's why I don't live there. Uh, you come out with things like that, and you never know whether they're going to decide to whack you. And it's pretty obvious. I mean, I didn't know that... The man had anything wrong with him. Uh, so with that said, uh, he probably went in the restaurant. And they knew he went there, perhaps because he liked the place. No, he went there all the time. He lived He lived right down the street. He went there all the time. So they had somebody inside, put something in the drink, and dead he is. And, of course, that idiot's going to get killed. I mean, anybody who knows about hitmen in history, big hits, they always kill the hitman. If you're killing just some low-level person, they're not going to kill you. When you're killing major media figures and it's political, they, they're probably going to kill whoever was dumb enough to do the job. Uh, that's probably true as well. Uh, although sometimes it is, and it all depends on the situation. Uh, there's plenty of uh, hitmen for the CIA working in the United States, as we all well know now, uh, which is not something that went on years ago. Uh, but it shows you what happens when you speak out, so you've got to be very careful, and you can't speak out and think you're going to get away with it with somebody like the president. You know, we're going to show you pictures of our dear friend, the president of the United States, at Communist Party meetings. It's just like the, the picture of... Uh, Martin Luther King at a Communist Party meeting. Uh, it never left him. It was at his side, uh, uh, following him all the way through his career. Well, they use that to blackmail Obama. I mean, that's undoubtedly going on, and that's why he's so bad. He's a puppet, but he is a totally blackmailed puppet. Well, I think you're right about that. And I think that Mr. Arapio's move in the position he's in, which is very, very important because he is professional uh, people who have looked uh, at the situation and said, no, th this isn't real. And uh, so now we have a prominent, uh, if not controversial person, who likes to speak <laughs> and likes to talk. Uh, he's up front there, and uh, he's going to take him on. Yeah, if I was Arpaio, I'd be watching it. Just, and we know he's, there's been attempts on him from the grapevine, I've been told. Stay there. Just a few months after Arpaio said he would investigate because the state house was looking at it in, in Arizona, the feds raided him over civil rights violations. I mean, if, if there's no proof to it, why are they trying to set him up? Again, their response is the proof of the guilt. We'll be right back. 
We've got callers from Oregon, Pennsylvania, Ohio, the UK, Maryland. We'll go to you with Bob Chapman of internationalforecaster.com. News has been breaking. I've been out of town. He hasn't been with us in about two weeks, and we've only got him for 30 minutes because i got to get Corsi on in the last 30. And we really appreciate Bob joining us. Bob, recapping the economy, then I want to go back into Breitbart, what that signifies for you. But how big of a deal is it that Ron Paul is now saying you're a liar, Bernanke? Stop making fun of people that are concerned about inflation. You know it's higher. You know, the fact that they're so disrespected, the fact that Brzezinski's new book says the number one issue facing the elite is we don't trust them anymore. And, of course, he says in the book, I was reading this quote last night, it blew me away. Uh, he was saying that 20 years ago it was easier to control a million people than it was to kill them. Now it's easier just to kill them than to control them. And he's not saying it's easy to kill us. That's hard. <laughs> he's saying it's impossible to, to get them to buy our bull anymore. So they've lost the info war, so that's why they're suddenly arming to the teeth against us. But that's not going to work. Uh, that, I mean, look at Europe when they suck everything dry. The police are turning against them. The firemen, the, 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 the bureaucrats. This is a nasty system. And now the oil prices are exploding. Uh, now the Federal Reserve is, is in trouble. Uh, with the world government's being announced, but we were there exposing it beforehand so people know it's not just some new solution they thought up. Where do you see the world right now, Bob Chapman? Well, uh, I think the situation with Ron Paul, uh, as you asked earlier, uh, is that people are starting in prominent places to speak out in very plain English, Mr. Bernanke, you're a liar. I mean, that's enough to floor anybody. I've never seen anything like that happen in the House or Senate before. Uh, there's uh, all kinds of rules that you must be nice to them and ask them tough questions occasionally. So I, I think that's a turning point. Uh, you and I have been watching Brzezinski uh, very closely for some years. And yes, you're right. They're, they're terrified. And they don't know what to do. And then uh, on top of the tremendous amount of money that's being put into the system, uh, we have the uh, system in Europe, which is the European Central Bank, borrowing almost $1.4 trillion from the Federal Reserve. They're crazy. Now, that's going to last about a year and a half, and it's going to come unglued again. What are they going to do? Another $1.4 trillion? Probably. And that means there's going to be lots of inflation. And that means people are going to be very unhappy, and gold and silver are going to go up. And just to be clear what Bob's talking about, uh, Ron Paul tells Bernanke he killed the dollar. That's Forbes. And uh, in there, he called him a liar. And we haven't even played that clip. We linked to it a few days ago at InfoWars.com. But the gloves are coming off. The gloves are coming off. And then to attack Ron Paul, they put out this meme that he's working with uh, Mitt Romney and that he's never run an ad against Mitt Romney. I went and looked, and, and Steve Watson wrote an article about it. He's run three different ad packages against Romney and spent over a third of his attack ad money on Romney in the last six months and has been running ads for two weeks against Romney. It's just all a hoax. It's just more lies and lies and lies. And you can expect it, ladies and gentlemen, so look at everything on both sides. Uh, today, uh, we're looking at uh, X. Senator Kerry and Graham uh, talking about how the Saudis, they thought, were involved in 9-11. Now, I don't have any inside information. I don't know exactly what's going on, but it looks like they're setting the Saudis up. So you can put that in the back of your mental chamber and let's see what happens. But there's no reason whatsoever for them to do what they've done in supposedly exposing the possibility that Saudi Arabia was in on 9-11. Oh, maybe they were. Well, of course but they were the working with the West to supply the Patsies, and that's why you know, 15 of the 19 came from there, and the head of the U.S. That's Embassy right. was ordered to let the hijackers in, but it was our criminal government running it as well. But again, uh, the word is they do plan to double-cross Saudi Arabia. And I think this uh, speaks volumes to it. I had to shove that in there because it's, it's very important. Because, uh, you know, if they're going to take down Saudi, the whole Middle East is coming down. Let me ask you this question. Well, that's, that's what Lindsey Williams says his old company exec got told him. He said two years ago he's going to start in the Middle East. The Saudis will be last. 
And sure enough, it's happening. And oil's going up, like he said, a little bit later than he said. Oil leaps to highest level since mid-08. Let's expand on that, though. Getting back to Breitbart, look, they say he had some heart problems before. Okay, fine. 43, people do have heart attacks at that age. He says, I'm going to get you, Obama. I've got video of you in college with your commie friends. Now we've dug up other quotes in the last week where he said, it's them with terrorists, him at communist meetings. This is going to destroy him. That's our story. It's now up at Drudge, top, one of the top stories in the, in, on the web. This is number six on Alexa. We'll check. It'll probably be number one soon. Well, we've had that a few times. The point is, number, uh, the number of people killed by government is well known. The fact that they have systems to give you heart attacks is well known. The fact that he goes to this neighborhood bar he goes to routinely, drinks two glasses of wine over two hours, was not drunk, looked completely normal to people that were there and talked to him. He had long political conversations, said, I'm going to bed, leaves right at midnight and drops, pretty much drops dead on the street, uh, goes into cardiac arrest, they say, then they're not sure, goes to the hospital. And within two hours, they already are saying it's a heart attack and natural causes when they never do that with Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, it takes a week at least. So we've got all that going on. And, and it's the fact that they were saying how he died within a few hours is the fact that they were trying to get ahead of the story that he was killed. That for me is a big smoking gun. But then, Bob, he was going to release the video, we now learn. This is confirmed. He was going to release the video March 1st, the, the hours before he's killed. So he's killed in the early morning hours, Pacific time, of March 1st, the day he was going to go public and release it and was all excited. I mean, the, the chances of that, Bob, what do you say to that? A million to one. The, the big question is, is, is there more, one, more than one copy of the video, and who has them? Well, he was going to release it that day, and I said yesterday, if the Breitbart people come out and say, we'll release it in a few weeks, you know... They've been told to go edit it and cut certain stuff out. Not a good sign they're announcing it's going to be in a few weeks now. Why, why wasn't it released yesterday? Why isn't it being released now when he's the biggest story out there? Uh, that's Byzantine. I will I tell you. Answer it. I, I just don't know. I will tell you behind the scenes, people very close to him are saying that their gut is he was killed. Michael Savage has said that, too. And Michael Savage, I know from Insiders, has bodyguards and broadcasts from like six different locations and literally thinks they're trying to kill him. And I knew this months ago and then again weeks ago, that, that Michael Savage is in hiding right now. Well, that's understandable. And uh, that's what I'm doing as well. <laughs> <laughs> well I tell you. Well, I know how these people act. You know, I used to work for them. And, uh, you know, I don't have to be told twice about something. I'm not dumb. What, they say we're going to kill you? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I've been threatened a lot. I guess I'm just, I'm just, I don't know what it is, Bob. It's just that, it's just that if they kill me, they kill me. I don't know how to explain it. I'm not worried about it. I love life, but I just... Man, getting killed in the service of liberty, that's kind of cool. Alex, and I do the same thing. I'm look, at, look what I'm doing at 77 years old, for goodness sake. And uh, why? Because they care about other people, just like you do and many of the other people out there. And so we keep, keep on giving it to them. And if we get killed, we get killed. It's the price we have to pay. Well, I don't blame you. They tried to set you up, tried to plant hand grenades on you. I mean, I know that I think if there's much stuff happened to you know, to me, as you, you know, I might leave the country, but I, I just still, I don't know. It's kind of exciting. I, I just, I guess I'm like a moth to flame. I'm just not worried about it. You know, Alex, if they wanted you, they would have done it already. Well, really? that's, that's what I've said over and over again. I Every mean, you're, you're such a, a thorn in their side that it, it just goes without saying. I think you've built up some kind of immunity that we just don't quite understand yet. Well, I think what it is is I mainly just uh, analyze stuff that's already out there. What I've seen people get killed over is when they have a particular breaking smoking gun. D.C. Madam, Breitbart, Vince Foster, that's when they kill you. When you're prominent and have the information that can bring them down, that, that's why they come after you.